This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining us this afternoon or evening, whenever you get a chance to watch us. And I guess some of you actually get to watch us at, what, 2 a.m. or something. There's some ridiculous time we're on at, in the morning. <laughs> like, if I favorite time, I think it's 4 a.m. Saturday. I get up, <laughs> have a cup of coffee. And, no, yeah, yeah, we, we're on three times. We're on three times in the week, so you get a, a few chances to take the swing at us. But we thank you for spending the time with us. I was speaking about spending time. China has been spending some time with the citizens of Hong Kong. A New York Times article actually called it a form of brainwashing, where essentially the new Chinese security law has created. Uh, I think behind the cameras, John mentioned the Stasi of China, and it's essentially the same thing. They've controlled your thought, they're controlling where you do, who you talk to, and how you say, and please report on your neighbors or your family if they say anything wrong. And it's this drumbeat of continual oppression, and it's sad to watch. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah uh, I mean, Hong Kong was one of the freest uh, countries in the world, uh, much freer than the United States before the uh, the mainland China uh, uh, crackdown, uh, particularly economically, it's not anymore. It's simply becoming a clone, uh, an exact replica, a copy of mainland China. I've got some experience having traveled extensively in China, and I can tell you, uh, having a, a, an interesting conversation with a tour guide. The tour guides, by uh, by law, have to be members of the of the uh, Chinese Communist Party. They have to be. You know, if you're a tour guide, you're a Communist Party member. Uh, and so we, we got to talking, and I, we, the, the tour guide took us through not just China, but also Tibet, which is another uh, vassal state of the Chinese government. Uh, the, the Tibetans don't want to be uh, controlled by the Chinese, but they in fact are, and uh, it's it's a garrison state. It really uh, it, it's really uh, uh, interesting to 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 look at the uh, cop, capital of, uh, of Tibet, Lhasa, and see all of the. Uh, the garrisons, the huge uh, military installations in the capital city, with, uh, with uh, which are manned by Han Chinese, uh, they've taken over the the uh, the culture. They've taken over the uh, government. They've taken over pretty much everything in, in Tibet. Now they're doing it in Hong Kong. I, I'm guessing that uh, Taiwan is next, uh, d despite whatever uh, uh, smoke blow smoke blowing the United States uh, does in opposition to it. Uh, it's a totalitarian form of, totalitarian form of government. It works if you uh, are willing to uh, follow the party line. The tour guide was very candid in uh, behind closed doors when you knew that the cameras were not and nobody was listening. He was, you know, he said, you know, it's just something we've got to do. We have to be a member of the Communist Party. We have to be very, very careful about what we say in public. We have to, uh, you know, as long as we don't do anything that's going to uh, uh, upset the uh, Communist Party leadership, we're fine. We can go about doing business. In our, in, in, you know, as much as we want, capitalistically, uh, China, even Hong Kong, China, mainland China, even Tibet, are all more capitalistic than the United States. It's just in the area of political political expression that they they simply are not. Yeah, I would say there there's uh, when you, when you talk about garrison countries, I remember not that long ago that that uh, uh, the United States kept garrisons in an awful lot of uh, you know, vassal states, uh, and I think probably viewed by many of the people there in, in, in a similar way, maybe not with as much fear of the Chinese government, because they've, no, wait, they're not the ones that dropped atomic bombs. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, but to go back to this, this uh, you have to toe the party line, and uh, you, you have to be careful about what you say, and as long as you don't as long as you don't uh, threaten the, the Communist Party, um, then you can go about doing business and you'll be fine. Feels a lot like this country now to me, um, that, uh, you know, the, the wokeness, you, you have to be very careful about, about what you say, uh, things spoken off the cuff, uh, you know, seemingly, where I see it is I, I follow sports, and the sensitivity of people to comments that, that you have to look really, really hard to find offense to in the sports world is insane. Like a, uh, a sportscaster made a comment about a guy's gold necklace and called it a bicycle chain, and he was almost hounded out of his job because that was somehow politically incorrect. And, uh, you know, questioning any of the attendants, any of the tenants of, uh, 
of the deep state in this country, like all this, the lockdown nonsense, which has been nothing but a disaster. Uh, don't question global warming slash uh, climate change, whatever day they call it, whatever they want, because that's a given. You know, don't don't question whether, you know, more government is a bad thing. So I think we're seeing that here. I don't know if the level of, of fear is uh, is there that there might be in communist China because we we're, we're not carting as many people off to prison as political prisoners here. We have an awful lot of people in prison. Uh, is, China, oh, no. Richard, is China, does China have, China still has less of its percentage of population in prison than we do here, right? Yeah, even even when you count all the Uyghurs, or Uyghurs yeah. or whatever they are in, in Eastern, uh, or yeah, far, far Western China. Uh, and, you know, talking about political correctness, ask the play-by-play -play guy of the Kings who said, all lives matter. Now I understand how that can be offensive to uh, black people and uh, mm -hmm. but is it a firing offense well it was for the kings yeah yeah, yeah. and then firing for uh if you fire someone who goes against the political status quo for violating wokeness or whatever the new level of perception is that's completely okay but if you were to fire someone because they belong to the communist party or or fomenting you know the collectivization of of uh of private property or anything else, uh, you would you would be in court, and and that would be uh, firing somebody over a political offense. So, it's it's a, a weird triple standard that I do not understand. But then again, I'm you know I'm the oppressed minority of old white guy, so uh, I don't, you know I just don't get it, and uh, you know I don't know if I ever will. I, I always thought we had this thing called the First Amendment, and you could voice your opinion and. And without repercussion. Well, it's actually, we're actually talking about a First Amendment thing. Coming we actually do. Back. We've got coming up right next with the Supreme Court, which actually tells us the difference, the slight difference we have between us and China. The Supreme Court has ruled that California violated the First Amendment rights by demanding donor information for, um, from, uh, oh, no, charity, charity groups, no, charity, charity groups, yeah. charity groups, yeah. nonprofits. Uh, yeah, this, California was demanding these information be given to the government for some reason i don't never never could understand the logic behind that but the supreme court has said no you cannot do that and which is i suppose the difference between us and the chinese mm -hmm. and the chinese communist party the chinese communist party has the ability to do what they want and at least we pretend i suppose <laughs> well the alleged reason the alleged reason was to prevent uh uh, fraudulent charities from 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 uh, getting getting more traction than they would otherwise, but in fact that law was never ever ever used for that reason, uh, and in fact the law was never enforced until Kamala Harris became Attorney General and she came down with it came down with a with a hammer on the law, and that's why uh, a couple of a couple of organizations filed suit or, or basically said we're not going to uh, we're not going to comply leading to the Supreme Court decision, which mm -hmm. said you don't have to. And it's a real, real simple uh, principle. I mean, you've got people uh, from groups uh, ranging from the uh, ACLU to Pacific Legal Foundation, where we have some experience, where donors who contribute to, to these organizations put their, could put their lives at danger, in danger to people who oppose what those organizations do. Mm -hmm. uh, the Unabomber uh, is made a, a direct threat to Pacific Legal Foundation. And if you are a donor to the Pacific Legal Foundation, who's to know that some Unabomber type who disagrees with the environmental policy or the property rights policy or whatever wouldn't go after the donors themselves. Mm -hmm. The state supposedly was keeping that information uh, private, but in fact leaked it on their website of all places. Anybody who wanted to find the, the list of donors of any organization didn't have to be a hacker to do so. It's uh, it's a it's a great decision, and I'm only determined or only disappointed that it wasn't unanimous. I think it was seven, seven to two. Well, and there still uh, there still exists a nationwide when you make um, contributions to uh, political candidates, that uh, information is part of the public knowledge. You can go to a database and search, and uh, find a person's name who gave to. <clears throat> local Republican candidate, local Democratic candidate, or or, the or me. Yeah. candidate, 
then you can find out how much they gave and all the rest of that. And then in, in this day and age, you can spend a lot of times you don't have to spend any money, but you can spend, you know, I think $30 a month and, and get access to a couple of services that allow you to drill down and find out where a person lives, where they have lived, what their email address is, what their phone numbers are, who their relatives are, what business that they've been in. Um, and, and if you can find out uh, who and how much someone donates, you can then drill down and find out where they live. And you know, the state of California has never been very good with data or uh, I, I think their technology stopped with uh, wired telephones where they got confused between three pieces of wire and two. Um, and so their ability to keep that information secret, even if it was used for what they want, which is fighting uh, fraud, and the state of California, Franchise Tax Board and uh, the Board of Equalization have tremendously astute, believe it or not, people in their fraud departments. They are really, really good at, at uh, finding people who pretend to be other people. The uh, unemployment development, on the other hand, not so good. You know, they sent like 500 checks to a person in prison. But the, the, the guise of... Um, fighting fraud was always a guise. It was simply that, that the uh, people in power on the left wanted to keep tabs on and, and really go after the people on the right and the supporters and make life difficult for them. And, and it, was, it was a tool of intimidation. No by, yeah. It was a tool of intimidation by Kamala Harris. Pure yeah, yeah. As, as which is if you... Well, and the I, people who yeah. keep the data happen to you know, go to the same cocktail parties as the people who would want the data. And so, you know, there's <laughs> this notion that they're going to keep it quiet. Yeah, it's never worked before. And they yeah. just quietly pass it on by word of mouth. You don't actually have to hand over an e email file. You just remember a few names and you hand it and you, you tell it to the person yeah, at the cocktail party. I think party we saw this, this happen on a national level when uh, it's a felony for people who work in, in uh, tax organizations, either at the federal level or at the national or at the state level, to reveal uh, financial information that or that is obtained as a result of uh, uh, of tax forms. Yet yeah, we remember in the last election, I think, um, that uh, somehow Donald Trump's uh, Donald Trump's income uh, records from um, the uh, his federal tax returns were released to the public. I don't remember. Well, they were, they were uh, leaked hearing, to the New York Times. Yeah, leaked to the New York Times. I don't remember uh, uh, reading an article after that about this person going to prison for violating that. Um, but, oh, that was, uh, they were never, they were never, never ever apprehended as far as I know. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, we're. It's a double standard. It's the deep state. It's politics. And and any time they say we want to put this law in effect to cut down on fraud, what it means is they want to put the law in effect to cut down on freedom. You just have to replace the word fraud with freedom. First two letters are similar, they're the same, but after that, everything's different. Just remember that, viewers. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and move on. There was an opinion piece in the Los Angeles Times this week about the Los Angeles masking guidelines are actually undermining the vaccination efforts because telling people that, yeah, you've got masks, but now you, you got vaccinated, but now you still have to go about and wear a mask. Well, then why the hell am I going to get vaccinated? Mm -hmm. What's the point? And so there's the very efforts to keep clamping down after, on people who've been vaccinated kind of are contributing to, to the reluctance to be vaccinated. And we actually talked about this a couple months ago, that some of these guidelines they're doing are actually harming their own cause. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking. Yeah, we'll 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 just, yeah, I mean, the masking and the lockdowns, they were never about the virus. They were all always about experimental experiments and controlling people and seeing how far you can go in controlling people and keeping them uh, buttoned down and, and you know, other politicians here. That's what they're about. Uh, what's interesting now is that the mainstream media, namely the Washington Post of all places, is finally figuring out that, hey, we maybe need to backtrack a little bit here. And so they uh, got a guy that I think, I think it was a, a doctor at Johns Hopkins or some uh, similar prestigious uh, organization to say, hey, you know what, this simply makes no sense to uh, require that vaccinated people wear masks. It makes no sense to have lockdowns when uh, people are already vaccinated. And, and the only thing that we're doing is we are destroying confidence 
in public health authorities. That may not be a bad thing, actually. Well, and I think generally it, it isn't a bad thing. Um, the, the fact that, that uh, I think it's actually a good thing in that uh, there's, there's a carryover. If, if you identify uh, public health as being part of government and the government establishment and the bureaucracy and all the rest of that, and, and start to see how ludicrous and ridiculous their uh, recommendations are. For example, they told people to stay home, and it turns out that most transmission of the flu or COVID or whatever you want to call it, whatever virus that caused this or was the tool to allow this pandemic to happen, was transmitted at home. So uh, if you see the, these so-called experts in uh, power in public office and their, their, the real power, the, the, the high levels of bureaucracy, as being uh, either incompetent or, or blatantly having a hidden agenda that you've now identified, then I think it causes people to step back and look at all the other things they've taken for granted, that all the other messaging they've received from from all the political types, whether elected or in the deep state. And I think that's a good thing. Um, the, the problem with it is if there ever, ever really is a basic health tenet that people need to follow. Um, and, and, you know, with, with modern media, we have the ability to push information out, it might not be right, then uh, people might choose to do stupid things. But if you're told to do stupid things repeatedly and you realize it's stupid, when that organization actually puts out good information, you're going to ignore it. So, I mean, there's good and bad news. Yeah. But I think the, the good more, the more overwhelms the, more. the bad. The good overwhelms the bad. If, if people then become more willing to, to trust uh, their own circle of experts, you know, like, like how you pick a restaurant. You know, you don't go to some government agency and say which which uh, restaurant that plays mariachi music that serves a good taco. You ask your friends, uh, and and you check with with people who've been there, which is you know how the world has worked forever. And as we get away from experts and more to dealing with people we trust, I think we'll all be better off. Yeah. yeah well, talking about people we trust, we've talked about our Madam Vice President a couple of times here already. But she's been accused by many, multiple people in her own office of creating a toxic work environment. And then to kind of prove the point, she went off and the, the office called them cowards <laughs> for, for, oh. going, for, for going around and leaking this information that the work environment is toxic. I mean, it's like you wouldn't prove – if you go and prove the point, it's, a, it's kind of absurd. Now, those of us in California who pay attention to these things are not surprised. No, no. But, we're we're – if, if – you know, that that's nothing compared to what uh, Kamala has has done. I mean, as a, uh, when she was a DA and attorney general, she did some blatantly, grossly illegal and immoral things, uh, withheld you know exculpatory evidence in a couple of capital crimes, basically condemning people to death if you know they would have not uncovered accidentally something that that helped them get off later. Um, so the you know the fact that that someone who's uh, acts like that in a position of power controlling lives would be bad at creating an environment of openness and trust uh, is is not a shocker at all. I think uh, if I think we in California uh, would have been uh, shocked shocked would be a mild word if uh, if if that kind of uh, reputation didn't come out of organization. You know, I mean, it's it's not I like mean, there's a yeah. I mean, Kamala Harris is truly an evil woman when it comes right yeah. down to it. The exculpatory yeah. evidence, uh, capital cases, the uh, uh, prosecution of uh, low-level pot offenders, and then smoking it herself. The the list goes on and on and on. Mm. She's a hypocrite. She's uh, driven by one thing and one thing only, and that's uh, personal power over others. And she is so close to getting it in uh, being the, the the anointed for a presidential nominee in the next, uh, in the 2024 election. I, I, I shudder in fear that she becomes not just an ineffectual laughingstock vice president, but becomes an actual president. That, an that actual, is my- An ineffectual my, laughingstock president. I, you know, the problem is once you're president, even, even though you may be ineffectual, you've got the whole of the executive 
uh, branch behind you, particularly when you're a Democrat. And could, she could do some real damage, not only on foreign policy, but also on domestic policy. Yeah. She is uh, uh, a, uh, a tyrant to be feared. Mm. Yeah, well, I absolutely agree. Yeah, it's there. she's only interested on the one thing, on promoting herself and pushing herself into, you know, power, whatever that actually means to her. And who knows what that's going to be? It's In a sense, she's worse than Trump's because she's actually in a, has a competent team working for her. And, you know, that actually would make her more dangerous than someone like Donald Trump. But yeah. speaking of Donald Trump, the New York City has been having their mayor elections and it's been littered with problems. Imagine that. <laughs> it's just the number yeah, of problems. I, I, the thing about the New York New York City, the, the election board is uh, it's it's entirely uh, entrenched in the political parties. The uh, people who run the election system are split between Democrats and Republican uh, machines, uh, mostly Democratic machine, and since it's New York, but equal numbers of both Democrats and Republicans. They're out for the party's interests, uh, and you know, I have a sneaking feeling that this whole thing might be an, an attempt to discredit. Uh, ranked choice balloting because ranked choice ballot uh, voting was brought into effect by, if I remember right, by uh, a, a referendum in New York. This was not something the Democrats or the Republicans came up with on their own, and I'm sure they don't much like it. So if you can make the, the election, the first uh, mayoral election that uses ranked choice uh, voting, uh, a total fiasco, which they've managed to do, then you, and then, you know, what, what what's, what's the most easy thing to do? You just blame it on ranked choice Voting and and uh, take no credit no uh, no credit whatsoever for the disaster that you uh, as the board election board have created by yourselves. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's that's the kind of machinations or is it machinations that that politicians do, which is you know one of the reasons that they're that most of their actual workplaces are so toxic because they don't ever go at anything straight on. You know what they do is they they say one thing and and whatever they say is exactly the opposite of what their goal is so i think you're i think that's very astute of you richard to think that it's it's uh probably an attempt to be grossly ineffectual and in, and in, uh, in order to get rid of ranked choice voting I, I think you're probably right and it was strange how it came about this it's the um an independent group actually was the ones who discovered it it's not like they even discovered it and it ended up being 135,000 test ballots were left in the system when they started to count. Now, I've run assembly lines. That's simply quality assurance procedures, which they clearly don't have. So, what you know, it's this is a procedural issue. Well, I think I think maybe back to Richard's point is that that this is intentionally bad, uh, and what what the reason why it's intentionally bad, I don't know, but. Um, I think uh, you know. Well, I, I mean, I don't. I don't want to contradict my own point. I don't want to contradict my own point, but uh, I do. We are. I we are talking politicians it. here, and they don't have to be intentional. Intentional to be uh, incompetent and bad. Mm. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, you can never rule out incompetence when you have politicians at. at well, I know. I think you should them. rule. You should rule incompetence in. I think that huh. should be your first. You know, everybody looks for these deep. Uh, you know. Uh, conspiracies and and my you know again my my brother loved the man and it just you know he'd always say what well, john you've met people in, in government right i can't go talk as slow as he he does or else the show will be over and 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 i'd say yeah and he said do you really think any of them can keep a secret and so my answer to that is no so incompetence is the first choice but there are some you know, back I, I I know I'm going sideways, but on Kamala Harris, the back door, the website that a lot of was it called was it called back door, well, the website that a lot of prostitutes were using to directly present their wares to uh, sex workers to the public, prevented I don't know how much violence and how many murders because it took uh, pimps out of the loop, and now that that's gone, they're back in the loop, and we can lay that right at the feet of Kamala Harris. So I'm sorry I had to throw that in there, but I want to make sure people... Yeah, well, we want to talk about incompetence. Sacramento has spent millions on homelessness, and, well, even more families than ever are homeless. Mm -hmm. And it's the more money they spend, the more homelessness we're getting. But it's actually not the money we're spending on homelessness. It's because we're not dealing with the actual problems of we've removed low-end housing, we've made housing deliberately more expensive. We never actually deal with the structural issues at play. We just throw money at the problem and pretend we're doing something. 
And, and there's no well, the, yeah, and then you get the key point: the structural problems of how we manage the economy, both at the federal level and at the state level, are the cause of homelessness. When you've got zoning laws that make it impossible to build small homes, tiny homes, when you've got uh, uh, zoning laws that make it make it impossible to build whatever home you want to in whatever neighborhood you want to, uh, and when you've got uh, 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 local laws that say this land is not available to be built on for any reason whatsoever, uh, when you've got uh, county laws that say you can't, that any house has to be more than 800 square feet or, or some arbitrary number, those are the things that cause, uh, the at the local level, those are the things that cause homelessness to be a problem because it drives up the cost of home uh, of home home building, at the federal level, you've got uh, a, a federal reserve system that systematically and over the over many many decades now has been making has been practicing financial repression, and by that I mean they have been lowering interest rates so that savers can't save any money, meaning you can't save enough money uh, at good interest rates to come up with a down payment for a home. At the same time, they have been uh, inflating the currency, which causes inflation, which causes uh, the price uh, price of homes to go way beyond what uh, working people can afford, many working people can afford. So what you have is a whole lot of people at the lower ends of the economic uh, uh, game not being able to afford housing anywhere. And they still live in California because, hey, California is has, has clement weather. Uh, it's a lot better than being homeless in Minnesota. I can assure you of that. And uh, they're not going anywhere, and 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 then the and then the, the remedy in San Francisco they they spent uh, they, they set aside land for tents and I forget what the number was something like sixty you know the cost came down to like sixty thousand dollars or some ridiculous amount per tent just to yeah. set aside the land. Yeah, you could have you could have literally paid the homeless five grand a month. At, at, and I, and, I, want to, you know, I want to throw something else in is that the, there is now an entrenched bureaucracy that makes its living from homelessness. So you got to fight through that as well. And I would think the, the simple solution is just substandard housing. Everybody says, no, oh, it's substandard. No, no. Compared to sleeping on the pavement or in the back of the car, any house is way above substandard housing for these people. Sometimes you have to adjust standards to help people. And that's what we need to do. Yeah, and we are just about out of time, so I want to thank everybody for coming. I thank Richard and John for joining us today. I want to thank all of our viewers for watching us. You can catch all the links to these articles we use at libertariancounterpoint.com, and you can send us any questions to counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. And thank you for watching, and please remember to love everybody. Thank you very much, James. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. James. Thanks, Thanks, John. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. Please visit us at http colon slash slash www.libertariancounterpoint.com. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Shows.